Hey guys, uh, Jack here. I'm in the middle of my food forest. And uh, when you build a food forest on a swell system, you end up with something called an inner swell. That's where we're at right now. We got the big mainframe swell right here. And we've got a line of trees. And then we've got some clumps of trees that we've planted and managed. And then we have a lower swell. And then we have another layer of trees. So it's a food forest, but it's done in a civo pasture model. That means we have left the inner swell open. There's a couple things we can do here. We can either graze it, which is what we do with ducks, and we can actually mechanically graze it with mowing when necessary. Um, or we can crop it. We could grow some kind of alley crop in here, which really wouldn't work well in this situation, so we don't do that. Or we can fill it with more trees. I decided to leave it in a, a, a prairie style civo pasture model. And that means that we're cultivating herbs and greens and grass for our use and for the use of our, wild, our, our wildlife and our livestock. And I wanted to talk about what happens when you do this for multiple years. When I moved in, and there's old videos, this entire field was brown. It basically would not grow anything at all. It just really wouldn't. It would just a little scrubby bit of grass in the spring and then it would be bare for the rest of the season. And as you can see, we no longer have that issue. And there's a lot of stuff that's in here that we brought here. This is, this is called tonic plantain. And that's an example of a plant we brought in. There's stuff that was here when we moved in that grew in little clumps and now grows everywhere. Like that little flower down there called spiderwort. And that's actually an edible flower. We use those in salads. Uh, there's some more spiderwort right there. It just doesn't have any flowers on it yet. And there's plants like lamb's quarters that come up around here that were already here and there's many herbs both medicinal and culinary that pop up that were already here and grow you know around the surrounding area there's plants like this which is sal salva medic which is a it's very similar to um what's the word i'm looking for now an alfalfa type plant we brought that plant here and now it's self-propagating we go over here We'll see a herb that almost every single person on the planet will recognize as something they put on your plate to try to garnish your steak. We have parsley growing right here in the middle of a sill from the main, uh, main swell. Well, this plant came here because I threw seed on the swales and it began to propagate itself. Again, we got some more of the um, alfalfa-like medic plant here, which helps repair soils. And this is what happened. There's some more right there. Uh, parsley coming up from you know self reseeding look I didn't see this when I was getting ready. this is parsley literally just growing like ground cover now you know and as long as the ducks don't eat it all we'll get some that's this tall with seed heads on it by next year and we can come in here and take that but when you really start to change an ecosystem what starts to happen is useful plants show up that you didn't plant, that you didn't bring the seed in, and you had never seen in the area before. I'm not saying this plant is not common in my region. It is very common. I have never seen it on my property until this year. This is my sixth year on the property, and you're looking at it right now. This is a medicinal herb known as cleavers. It's very easy to identify. It's getting some really pretty flowers on it eventually. Back there they are, right there. Little white flowers starting to show up. Right there, it'll have it all over them. And the reason they call this cleavers is if you watch my hand, you can see it like grabs my hand. My wife, I showed her this plant last night, she didn't like it the way it felt. It feels like it's grabbing you or cleaving onto you. And this is a very important medicinal plant. It's been used for a very long time. But this plant simply did not exist on my property until this year. And as you can see, it's not like, you know, I went and got a load of dirt or something and I got a little bit of it and it's it's come up for the first time this year. It's actually all over the place. And we let that plane cross and get out of here. Look here. There's entire little glades of this plant. And to get away from that, because I know they're gonna be making another pass, I'm gonna go back over here, kind of make my point and get away from that spot. Dandelions, I know no one gets excited about dandelions. That's another plant that I just, I, they, never, they don't even grow in my neighbor's yards where they water. 
and now they're growing here. It's so alkaline, it's taking this long to grow a dandelion. But if I look around here, I can find these cleavers right here popping up literally just all over the place. We've got more and more of them showing up. Now, what's causing this? Why? Here's another huge area full of them. What has caused this plant to not have ever been sown in seed to just all of a sudden start growing here where it's never been before, at least in our history on the property. And I can tell you the people that own the property before me that put it into the state that it was in, it wasn't here when we got here. And, and, and six years later, all of a sudden, this plant decides it's time to just start growing here. Now we know that plant can't get here without seed. We know that there's no such thing as spontaneous generation. That's a scientific myth that was disproven a long, long time ago. And part of why we developed something called the scientific method. So why? A lot of times when I'm teaching about permaculture, I will talk to you guys about something called germination triggers. And there are different triggers for germination. If right now, we pulled all those leaves away and created a disturbance and got a compactor like they do to put down a driveway base and we compacted a square foot right there nothing would grow for a little bit it would take a while but pretty soon you'd see stuff growing there that would look different than the stuff right next to it if right over here we went right here and we cleared this and we turned it up with a tiller and we made it really loose that would be another germination trigger we get different plants that would grow there we came over here and got a square foot and took a weed torch and just scorched the earth and baked the half top half inch of the earth like it was a forest fire and backed off. There's seeds below that level that would get triggered by that burn, by that disturbance, and they would grow. What has happened here on my property is with six years of management, something or another as a positive took the seed bank that's been in the ground for who knows how long. The seeds that grew this year could have been there for 10 years, 15 years or more and triggered the conditions are now right for this plant to grow. That doesn't necessarily mean I did anything really good or bad. It just is what happens. It's natural systems, isn't it, Lucy? And this is why you can go into a property and start doing something like grazing cattle and end up developing a pasture without putting any seed on it at all. That's why Alan Savory's been able to do that. Because as we change the ecosystem, all of a sudden, there's these massive seed banks that are in the ground. And these seed banks blow up. That doesn't mean that we don't wanna bring in additional plants. Again, this tonic plantain is a wonderful plant. In fact, it may be that this plant is bringing up specific nutrients and it was able to grow here when the cleavers weren't, it might be part of or the entire germination trigger. I don't know, it's been here so long, I doubt it, but it doesn't mean it's not possible. And as we look through here and we see dozens of different plants, most of them I know, some of them I'm still learning, some of them are new, some of them have been here. Here's a plant, I brought this plant here, this is purple vetch. It's self-reproducing now. It is a nitrogen fixer. It is a good, it is a good grazing plant. Wild garlic, right here, got some wild garlic. We've got, I don't even know what this little guy is. That's a new flower for me. I've started to see those as I've never seen them before. I'll have to learn what that is. And we'll see it in places like this. We have bare areas still where the earth is not fully healed yet. And this is probably the overly overly duckified with too much water is probably what did that but that'll create its own trigger something will grow there this area now is into a state of repair another little plant that i don't actually know what this plant is but everything is transformed everything is beginning to success and become better and it's simply because of effective land management it's the fertilization put down by the ducks that are grazing the system, and at one time the geese that are grazing the system. It's the stopping of the erosion by the swales. 
The swells are infiltrating all the nutrients that they capture into the land and moving it through, creating a nutrient cycle. But yep, cleavers. Never saw this plant on our property before this year, but it had to have been here just waiting for the opportunity. This is part of the beauty of permaculture. You don't know what nature's gonna give you when you start working with it. With that, take care guys, I'll catch up with you later.